The Federal Reserve wraps up the year with a resounding finale. The Fed officials cut their inflation expectations for this year and the next. They upped their rate cut expectations and hinted that the policy pilot is coming. So the US Dow Jones index hit a record high yesterday. Bonds rallied even stronger and the US dollar tanked. Now attention shifts towards the European Central Bank and Bank of England officials to see how these European Central Bankers feel about all all this dovishness. So welcome. This is Swiss Codes Daily Market Talk. So bring more champagne because the party goes on. The Federal Reserve is not bothered to see the US yields fall in preparation for a rate cut, not even a little bit. On the contrary, they actually endorse the idea of a monetary policy pivot thanks to an encouraging fall in the inflation numbers. And well, they sounded way more dovish than anybody out there expected them to sound at their policy announcement yesterday, which clearly but clearly exposed that the policy pivot is coming in the US. So this is the major take of the final FOMC meeting of this year. And it was, well, totally, but totally unexpected and surprising. So investors were enforced, not even a little bit, to read between the lines in this Fed statement. The dovishness was big as a mountain. Now, the Fed president, Jerome Powell, still said, just for the sake of saying it, that it is far too early to declare victory over inflation. But, but the Fed lowered their inflation forecast for this year and for next year. And the so-called dot plot from the Fed, which actually plots where the Federal Reserve officials see the interest rates going in the US, well, plotted a 75 basis point cut in Fed funds rate next year. So the medium expectation now suggests that the Federal Reserve will be cutting the interest rates to 4.6% by the end of next year. And that's a quite a big, big change compared to the last time the Federal Reserve President Jerome Powell spoke to say that the interest rates in the US would stay high for long. So right now, it appears that the interest rates in the US won't stay high for so long. So the first Fed rate cut is now expected to happen in the month of March next year, with more than 85% probability assessed to it. So the markets had a blast at yesterday's trading session. As you guessed, the US two-year yield, which captures the Fed rate bets, well, sank to 4.33% level yesterday after the decision. And with the dovish message that the Federal Reserve sent to to the market, well, the 4.5% level that I saw as a support at the start of this week just before the Fed decision should now act like, well, a resistance. The US 10-year yield, on the other hand, sank below the 4% level this morning, reflecting the idea that the Fed policy pivot suggests some meaningful slowdown in the US economy in the coming quarters. Now, these falling yields obviously sent the S&P 500 above the 4,700 mark yesterday, and this is the highest levels that we saw in almost two years. Note that the S&P 500 is now around 2.3% lower than an all-time high level that was reached back in January 2022. And we are back, obviously, into the overbought market territory with yesterday's rally, which calls for a certain correction in the short run, but, but, but there is, at this point, no reason for the bulls to stop living in an extension of these gains toward new highs for the S&P 500 unless, unless we see a meaningful fall in earnings expectations and that's not happening tomorrow. The rate sensitive Nasdaq 100 is also a few points below its own all-time high level which was reached back in November 2021 and the US Dow Jones Industrial Index actually hit a fresh record at yesterday's trading session. So if there was one thing that we wouldn't bet on at the start of this year? Well, it was to see the major US indices flirt or refresh records following a more than 500 basis point rate hike in the US in less than two years. But here we are right now. The life is full of surprises. So the dovish Federal Reserve also echoed loudly across the foreign exchange markets. 
As you could guess, the US dollar was sharply sold yesterday, the euro dollar rebounded back above the 109 level, cable extended gains to 126.50 level and the dollar yen fell almost 1.80% yesterday and the pair slipped below the 141 level this morning. Now looking at the technicals, trend and momentum indicators are comfortably negative for the dollar yen. Looking at the fundamentals, well, well, this narrowing divergence between a more dovish Federal Reserve and a more hawkish Bank of Japan is also comfortably positive for the Japanese yen and negative for the dollar yen. Hence, any price rallies that we might see in the dollar yen at this point well, are now seen as good opportunities to strengthen the short dollar yen positions. Now today, it's the European Central Bank and the Bank of England's turn to well, give their final policy verdicts for this year. And both Madame Lagarde and Mr. Bailey are well, certainly a bit annoyed to see the Federal Reserve go this soft at well, yesterday's meeting, as Christine Lagarde had said herself that there should be no reduction in the interest rates in the Eurozone in the next few quarters. So at this point, it will be very, very interesting to see if the ECB and the BOE officials feel comfortable about, well, giving up their tough stance as well. Until yesterday, until yesterday's Fed announcement, I would have expected Christine Lagarde to push back the expectation of interest rate cuts in the Eurozone in March. But now I simply well, don't know. I still believe that she will do that, that she will actually say that it's still premature to talk about interest rate cuts in the Eurozone, in which case we could see the euro dollar jump above that 110 psychological mark and eventually finish the year above this level. But we will see what happens across the channel. And the situation is, well, less obvious for Mr. Bailey. We saw earlier this week a sharp, sharp decline in British wages growth. But even with a sharp decline, well, British workers actually see their real pay rise. So that's inflationary. What is not inflationary, however, is the British growth outlook because the UK economy actually contracted 0.3% in October. That was more than expected, with activity slowing in the main sectors all at the same time for the first time since July. And well, that's obviously a good, good argument for the Bank of England. Those even though, even though the Brits put it again on the back of wet weather. But whatever it is, well, yesterday's 0.3% contraction printed for October GDP in the UK is a good argument for the Bank of England dose to boost their rate cut expectations as well. And well, it just goes in line, hand in hand, with the ECB and Fed cut expectations. And one big argument in the UK is that inflation has more than half in the UK since the start of this year. Yes, yes, but. But the counter argument to that, which is almost as big as, well, the argument is that inflation in the UK, all it is half, stands at the 4.6% level today, which is more than twice the Bank of England's 2% policy target. So. The Bank of England is also expected to cut the interest rates next year, but it is expected to start cutting the rates after the Fed and well, after the European Central Bank. So that hawkish divergence in favor of the Bank of England should somehow play in favor of sterling both against the US dollar and the single currency. So if the Bank of England doesn't surprise well, today with a dovish statement, we could actually see resistance in the euro sterling between 0.8630 0.8640 range that includes the 100 day moving average and the major 38.2% Fibonacci retracement. Now, if you're a bit lost in this ocean of central banks, here is a quick cheat sheet for you before the end of this episode. So overall, the expectation is that the Federal Reserve will start cutting its interest rates next spring. The European Central Bank could cut before the Federal Reserve as inflation metrics look favorable in the Eurozone and growth outlook is well softer than in the US. So that's one thing that's in favor of the ECB dose. However, we could actually see this dovish expectation change if Madame Lagarde successfully pushes back the spring rate cut expectations for the Eurozone at 2 
today's monetary policy announcement. The letter could actually give a further strength to the euro against the US dollar, but but probably not against sterling as well, the Bank of England, which was obviously less efficient in its fight against inflation, will likely be the last central bank to start cutting its interest rates among these three major central banks. So this is all for today. I'm Ipek Oskar and thank you for joining me and thank you for all your beautiful and supportive comments. I hope this episode of Market Talk has been helpful and it has been insightful to you. So please do not hesitate to leave your comments, your reactions and your questions below as usual. And follow us on Instagram, on X and on LinkedIn for regular market updates. And subscribe, of course, to our YouTube channel for daily market comments. And please, please, please do not forget to hit the like button on these videos to let us know that you enjoy them. So I will meet you again tomorrow. And until then, good day trading.